Now that we learned to rig, let's do a small animation with our character. As you can see, the bone structure is a little bit different now. We have some smart actions for the pupils, we added some physics for the hair, and overall it's a little bit different, but still should control very similar to what we just set up. It's also good to see that you can rig different ways. You can see here as an example, the way this is set up, there isn't a pelvis bone, and the targets are actually not pin bones, but still it works very similar. And it's interesting how you can go in and rig things a little bit differently and still get similar results. So here, we're just going to do a quick little animation and I'm just going to do a jump animation for this demonstration. So we are on the bone layer for this and I'm just going to come in and let's go to frame 12. Actually, let's do frame six. And we're just going to have the character here come in and sort of duck down like this. And while she's ducking down, I'm just going to add in a blink. So we kind of have this going on. And as she's moving down, the physics of the hair are going with her. So maybe she's in this position just for a moment. And I'll add like three frames between here and there. So we're on frame nine now. And we can use Control F or Command F to lock down your bones. And this is a really nice feature because if we were not to lock this down, we wouldn't have this little pause here. If we were just to continue animating, it would just tween or animate between these keyframes. So being able to come in here and add in your keyframes where you need them can really help set up a more customized animation. So we have this little pause. And then we can have her perhaps jump up. So we're just going to come in here and raise her up. So in this case, I'm just going to kind of go like this. So we go from here to here. And then I'm going to bring her back to default at frame 24. So it goes boink. Now that's not really the most pleasing looking animation but we're going to change that and build that up here as we continue. So coming over here, when she's going up, I'm going to grab the target here for the back leg just by clicking on it with the select bone tool and coming down here to the channels, I'm going to copy the red channel here, which is going to be that target and paste it on frame 12. So essentially it's going to delay the leg just like that. And then at around frame 19, perhaps we could do something similar. Maybe we'll have this leg come down first. So I'm just going to copy these frames from that first pose and paste it back like this. So you kind of have this going on and then she comes down. Now when she comes down, she should probably react to hitting the ground instead of just sort of standing there. So we're going to go, let's say to frame 30, and hit Control F to insert some keys, and then come back here to frame 24, and we can add in that little dip that we were just talking about. So maybe down like this, hands out like that, a little bit more like this, and then we can have her blink again. So it kind of goes like this, and then there she is. So just a little animation, and as you can see, we now have keys recorded for all of this. And if we wanted to, we could go in and start to manipulate this more. Perhaps we want her to look over when she finishes jumping. So on frame 30, given that we already have keys for everything on frame 24, the pupils are already locked in. So on frame 30, we could just come in here and maybe she's looking over this way now or even up after she jumps. Maybe something scared her. So something like that. And even then we could maybe cock her body back a little bit more, kind of like this, because she's looking over that way. Something like that. Just a little bit of a difference. There we go. So as you can see, once you have a rig set up and everything is polished in terms of actions and you have no issues with how things are moving, I think you'll find that you can go through animation pretty quick once you get familiar with the timeline.
And what's more is you can even save animations and reuse them using the actions panel and all sorts of different things. And we'll be getting more to that here in a later video. But it's really cool that once you have these set up, you can go in and use them as if they're puppets and create scenes and animate and do what you need to do.